What's up everybody? Thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I'm Kurt and we are working on a 280ZX engine for a 1973 240Z. Now, we are working today back in the garage. We are working on our head and we're going to go over the modifications that we've done to the head in detail and then we're also going to assemble it and get it ready for the block. Stay tuned. So in a previous video, we went over all the modifications we did to the head and as well the block to our 280ZX engine. Now, in this video, we're going to go over in details what we did and what had done and what it does. So to be on the bottom or on the chamber side of the head, we had the deck shaved by 80 thousandths of an inch, which is roughly about two millimeters. And we, of course, as we discussed before, ported and polished, cut valve guides, opened up the runners for the intake a little bit. And as well, we need to replace the valves. Now the valves, the easy trick here is because we've shaved this, we need to make the top end taller by that 80 thousandths of an inch or two millimeters. So with the 280ZX valve and the 280Z valve, there is about that 80 thousandths of an inch difference in height. So we went ahead with new valves, intake and exhaust. And now we're gonna to move to the top side of the head to discuss those changes. So now we're at the top side of the head and basically with shaving the bottom side, that 80 thousandths of an inch, what we need to do is raise the top end that 80 thousandths of an inch. And the reason why is because when you undercut the deck, that means that the timing chain will be slightly loose and the tension will not be able to be kept correctly. So the way to do that is we need to get a head shim kit and you would need four of them because that equals about 80 thousandths of an inch and you're going to lift the cam towers that amount. Now I also mentioned prior that the valve stem is also 80 thousandths of an inch roughly longer than the previous valve stem. So then what we need to do is we need to shim the valve springs. Now the valve springs, there are two, there's an inner and an outer. In stock, they come with one outer shim and one inner shim. And basically what you would want to do is the shims come out to be roughly about one millimeter each. So you would want to put two extra outer spring shims and only one. It's just a helper spring. You don't want to put too much tension on the internal um, valve spring shim. And by doing so, that will bring the valve springs up and thereby being able to hold on to that valve correctly. And as well, that will put our cam towers in the right spacing from the rocker arms and the valves. So now we're going to go and assemble. So once you have all your shims and you've purchased them, some sometimes they are hard to find. These shims for the springs took about two weeks to uh, obtain because I asked for so many because I needed 24 outer spring and 12 inner spring shim. So once you have all of that together, you can go ahead and assemble the head just as you normally would, just making sure everything is clean and sealed and ready to go. So we're gonna do that now. For the four plugs in the cylinder, we're gonna be using Mega Black or Ultra Black can be used by Permatex. So we're gonna seal these up. install the rocker arm pivot bolts and we're just going to put a little bit of anti-seize on the outer piece 
run those in, and then put in the adjustment bolts. Now we're going to put on the springs and you want to make sure the little ears face towards the center of the head and then we're going to put on the adjusting bolts with a little bit of oil. We're going to install the valves. We have already lapped all the valves and cleaned the combustion chamber and we've also sized the combustion chamber uh, to 42 and a half CECs. So we're all good there and they're all balanced and each intake and exhausts are matched and we're going to move from one to six and we're going to install with some assembly lube on the valve stems and then as well with new stem seals. So now we've got our valves in, we flipped it over and before we put our valve seal on, we'll want to put our inner spring shim on first. And in this mod, like we talked, we are going to put two shims for every valve. Now that we have our valves in, they're sealed, and we have our inner spring shims installed, we're now going to work on the outer spring shim and with this we want to raise that up by that 80 thousandths of an inch or two millimeters so we're going to install an extra set of two of these so first install the factory ones and then the ones that we purchased then we'll install the outer and inner springs and then install the retainers <laughs> Okay, so now we need to put the keepers in to hold the retainer down against the valve and the tools that they have available for rent from O'Reilly or AutoZone are really cheap. Don't like them, they slip off real easy. And what I find that works well is taking a piece of PVC, that's about, I think it's one inch, and then cutting out a little window or slot and then using one of these uh, quick holders, can't think of the name, and then take a piece of t-shirt or rag and hold that under the valves with a piece of wood on the deck of the head. very carefully and always wear eye protection for this tighten the clamp that's the word I was looking for down carefully placing your keepers in the little window magnet is helpful. And then 
very carefully letting up on the and dropping everything on the floor. So we have all our keepers in, all our valves are set. Now we need to focus our attention on the cam tower and we're going to put four sets of cam tower shims giving us that lift that we need and then we will put in the towers and then just finger tight the bolts for them. Yeah. So we got the cam towers in and one thing I want to show is using the machinist punch before you take the cam towers off is to go through and mark them one, two, three, four, and five. That way you keep them all in order on where they go. But now we're ready for a cam. For our build we took the 280ZX cam out. We sent it up to Tacoma, Washington to Delta cam shaft. And they did an awesome job regrinding uh, the cam to a, a little bit better performing uh, grind. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll lube all the journals and lube the internal of the cam towers. And I think to myself, what a wonderful What a wonderful world. All right, we've got our cam in, so now we're going to put on our thrust plate, and it only goes on one way. We'll put these bolts on, and then once we get these all on, we'll go through and then torque our cam tower bolts and these thrust plate bolts. So with our reground cam, one of the things we want to do is we're going to have to check the clearances and the way that the rocker arm meets up with the lash pads. So what we'll want to do in this case is take our new timing gear. Uh, we did get a brand new set and we will want to set the dowel to sit in the number one slot of the timing gear. That way it keeps, as we're adjusting the valves, it keeps the cam from moving and then we'll just snug up the bolt and we'll torque it down at a later time. Now we'll take some flash pad and we'll cover this up. Normally use like a machinist blue to paint over the, the marking you can see, this is the uh, previous one with the, the shiny part where it touched. And that's roughly where we want the rocker arm to slide with the cam. So we'll take some Sharpie, mark that up, let it dry, and then install uh, one of the rocker arms and just go one by one down the row and keeping track of each lash pad and rocker arm. Now the rocker arms with the cam that went to Delta Kim shaft. I also sent the rocker arms to them where they resurfaced and cleaned them up, uh, especially since we did do a new regrind. So those are all set to go as well. So we've put in our rocker arms, we've coated our lash pads with Sharpie and we've installed them. And so now we need to set the lash and we are going to do that by setting the intake to 0.008 of an inch and our exhaust to 0.01 of an inch. So we went ahead and spun the cam twice and we did that by using a adjustable wrench on the two lobes on the cam 
that spins it really easily and we checked the lash pads they came out just perfect we want to see the white pattern right in the middle of the lash pad so now what we're going to do is lube everything up reinstall the rocker arms and then readjust and then we will put on the clips and then the final things are putting on the cover for the mechanical fuel pump because we don't need that there's the timing chain cover plate we're going to put on also the heater hose uh, elbow we need to put on and as well the head temperature sensor needs to go on as well and then we will be done with the head so we finished the head it's all assembled it's all in spec and we are good to go we just added those springs to keep in the uh, rocker arms so we're good to go so coming up videos are the assembly of the block and those pieces working on balancing the internal moving parts pistons connecting rods and we'll be doing a final assembly of the engine and then hopefully it runs thanks so much for watching if you enjoy what you see please don't forget to subscribe and also like